Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is my pleasure to introduce our expert on pipe organs for today. To you and me, he's Mr. Peter Gerger, but to the world, he is Organ Man. Uh, oh, hold on. Uh, no, no, get rid of the cape. <laughs> he can't wear a cape because it would get caught on all the pipes in the organ chamber. Oh, okay, that's better. Thanks. Uh, but wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start with the basics. Pipe organs have been around, in some form or another, for hundreds of years. It has been called the king of instruments, and for good reason. Pipe organs have thousands of pipes, and so the combinations of sounds that can be created are literally endless. This is the pipe organ console. It has keys just like a piano, and it also has stops that make the pipes sound like different instruments. Here are the pedal keys that the organist plays with his feet. And these are the pedals that control the volume. And this is a candelabra. <laughs> I just wanted it there because it looks nice. <laughs> anyway, a lot of churches also have a few pipes on display near the console, but these are mainly just for show. What you can't see are all the other pipes that the organ uses. They keep those in the organ chamber. It's a hidden room in the back, and you can only get there through a small door. Organ Man spends most of his time in the chamber, tuning the pipes so they stay in key, connecting electrical wires, and installing brand new pipes. He needs to be very careful not to knock over or step on any pipes. He has to be able to pull himself up onto platforms, maintain his balance on narrow passages, and sometimes even has to pull out mice and other critters that make their homes in the pipes. They can't live there because it would affect the sound. Oh, don't worry. He lets them free outside. The pipe organ uses three things to make its music. Air, electricity, and pipes. Here's what happens. The organist flips a switch that turns on the blower. The blower fills the wind chest with air. Then she holds down a key, which causes a tiny portal to open up and lets air into only that pipe. The air is forced through the mouth of the pipe and plays the musical note. Pipe organs have two kinds of pipes, reed pipes and flue pipes. Reed pipes produce woodwind and brass sounds, and flue pipes make flute and string sounds. The pipes also range in size, from a few inches tall to pipes that are as big as a house. <laughs> That's 32 feet! The bigger the pipe, the bigger the sound. It's not necessarily a loud sound, but something about it speaks to your soul. With a good organist, the music from a pipe organ can take your breath away. This is very inspirational to most people, and that's part of the reason why pipe organs are in churches. It helps people feel closer to God. Pipe organs take a lot of skill to install and a lot of training and skill to play. Of course, the Phantom of the Opera knows how to play one, and Organ Man knows him personally. Just kidding. The Phantom of the Opera isn't real, but Organ Man is real. And he can answer any question you have, now that you know the basics. So don't be shy. Ask Organ Man anything about the pipe organ. He has all the answers.